Hi, welcome uh, in this uh, TikTok talk webinar about how to use timing during a live or pre-recorded uh, show. So I see we have people from uh, South America joining, Los Angeles, some from Australia, Aust Austria, Poland, Poland, Germany, and Belgium. So thank you all for watching. It's uh, very nice that, there, that there's uh, so many interests, so, so much interest. Um, this webinar will be hosted by three people. So we have Charlie, present in Brussels, who is responsible for customer happiness. And she will keep an eye on the chat in case you have uh, any questions. And there's Tony Gregory, Tony Gregory, from live from Vienna one of Europeans leading entertainment television directors. Tony helped us a lot in developing the whole timing section. And as a multicam and live show expert, he has been an inspiration for uh, our developers. Hello, service Els Wien. Hello from Vienna. <laughs> uh, in, in the UK, they have four more structured terminology, best practices when it comes to uh, timings, when it comes to live shows, I believe. So it's very useful that he's uh, here. And uh, I am Eric Houters, a TV multi-camera multi director, uh, as Tony is, and I founded uh, Tinkerlist uh, about five, year, five years ago. And we will be showcasing how, how to use timings in our platform today. The webinar will take about 40 minutes, and, and, these, top, and these are the topics we will uh, cover uh, today. So we uh, will start with a brief introduction about uh, timings in Tinkerlist. Uh, we have a use case about a recorded show. Uh, and then uh, we've got some theory about back times. Um, then we have a use case about a live show, how that's cute. So Tony will give a, a very detailed example of how uh, of, of a small uh, uh, live show. And then we've got some time for some uh, Q and A. But first of all, let me explain in three slides, very short introduction, what uh, Tinkerlist is. Um, first of all, we do uh, planning of shows. So. Uh, uh, we have we we build a calendar where you can organize your um, rundowns, your scripts, um, and then you can also organize all your guests, the briefs of the guests, the preparations for the guests, uh, see who the crew is of today. So that all you can organize in our calendar. And then we've got the main thing in Tinkerlist that's the scripts and the rundown. So the script is actually like a bit it's, it's a bit like a Google Drive document where you can all type in together. And uh, the rundown is uh, actually the same thing as the script. It's just another view on it. So it's just one click of the button to switch from one to another. It's very nice because while your producers are creating the content, you can already start making technical notes in the, uh, on the side of the, of the script. And then uh, we do automation. So we've got, for example, we've got a tablet up for hosts where um, the text of the script are immediately sent to the, the, the tablet up for the host. Uh, we've got uh, some integrations with the most known teleprompter applications and then um, uh, integrations with some uh, technical devices in studio to, to be able to enable um, graphics, uh, queuing of graphics, queuing of, um, of lower thirds and clips. So that's very briefly what Thinklist does, but today is about timings and we are so excited to show you this latest upgrade of our platform. And we are also very curious about your opinion. So please uh, share your questions or concerns with us during this session. If you have a chat um, on the right here on your screen or send us an email after. So now I will give the floor to Tony. He will dive in with some very practical examples. Hello, well, look, thanks for joining us all this morning. Um, I've used Tinkerlist on live shows myself. As Eric says, um, I'm a live director at all sorts of shows, entertainment, factual and so on. Um, before that, I worked in radio. And so I'm very familiar with the old days where, you know, we would have lots of analog stopwatches and paper and pencils. Um, and in fact, in radio, you used to do everything yourself. So you would run the control desk and do the timings and produce the presenter um, and so on. So although I'm a director and I normally have an amazing script supervisor to my side, um, I'm very familiar with timings uh, because of all the shows I've done and, and the history in radio and so on. And the new timings developments in Tinklist are really very, very exciting uh, for live shows. Obviously, because uh, it's collaborative, you can work anywhere with Tinklist. Um, and, and it's a really fabulous tool. Now it's got uh, these time, new timing facilities. So I'm going to take you through that. As Eric says, I'm going to do two short case studies. The first one will be a very simple pre-recorded show um, just to get you familiar with um, how the timings look and how they operate. 
Then I'm just going to do a little bit of theory on back timing. Sounds boring because it's theory, but just two minutes to clarify what we mean by back timing and how it works, because I know not everyone will be familiar with that. And then it's important to, to do that because when I come to run the live show and I'm going to run a live show, a five minute live show with Tinklist, so you can see that all in action in a few minutes. Um, and that's where the concept of back timing is going to become really, really important. So that's what I'm going to do with you for the next few minutes. First of all, I want to give you a quick tour of the timings on uh, Tinklist. And for those who haven't seen Tinklist or, or used it, this, this will be a good little introduction with um, how the basics work. So I'm just going to share uh, my screen. Bear with me a second while I find the right tab. OK. Well, it looks like you can now see my screen and you can see that I've got a very simple running order or rundown there. Um, there's only five items. Um, I've got some timings in there for each item, some estimated times like you would always have on, on a running order. Uh, the demonstration shows the case studies I'm going to take you through this morning, this show, this test show and my live show in a few minutes. They're really simplistic versions of shows. You wouldn't normally have a show with only five items in the running order. And some of the timings are unnaturally short. Um, but because I'm going to run some of the timings, I didn't want to put in a four minute item and then we've just got to sit there while it counts down. So the timings are um, unrealistic. The number of items are, but you're, it's to help you get the gist of what we're doing, but to keep um, the webinar sort of short and efficient, really. So just to walk you through what we've got here. This is the running order view. As Eric said, the running order and the, and the script are really the same document. Um, I can just change the view and I'm going to do that using this button here. And if I expand into the script, you can see there's my script view with each sequence. I've got some text in there for the host. Uh, I can select where the item is in the studio and so on. Um, but really, we're here to talk about timings today. And you can see the timings here on, on the script. Many people don't need all the timing detail on their script, and, and you, can, you can turn that off uh, and on to taste. Um, but really, I'm just going to concentrate on the running order view today, because that's what's going to make it straightforward to help share with you how the timings are going to work. So um, just to walk you through what we've actually got on the screen here, at the top left, this is my target for the show. Now, I've got the option of a, a, a live show or a pre-recorded show. I've selected the recorded show type because that just affects some of the calculations. Um, when you're doing a live show as well, you need to know your on-air time and your off-air time. These things aren't relevant when you're doing a pre-recorded show. So here, we've got our target duration for the show. And my target duration for this show is one minute. Um, we've been building up our running order in the office, preparing for the show. But actually, the estimated total for my running order is coming in at 105. That's just the sum of all the items in my running order. There's a, a, a red five there, five seconds. That's just there to remind me that there's a difference between my target and my estimated. It's saying me that it's telling me actually I'm five seconds over. I've, I've built a running order here, which is five seconds longer than my target. So that's a useful thing because actually this estimated total here, these will change in rehearsals. So it's always useful to have that to uh, give me a quick idea of, of what variance I've got from my original target. So, um, so that's what this block is. As I'm recording the show in a moment, this will become the active block for the show and it will count up and down on the duration. So it will count up from the beginning as I start the show and it will count down to the target. Now, because we haven't started it, the countdown is just stuck there in one minute because my duration has been set at one minute. So I'll come back to that in a moment. But I just want to show you these columns here. The Q buttons we'll use in a moment, that starts the timing for a current item. You'll see that in action in a moment. This is the estimated time for each sequence. Now, um, the VTs, we've already added these. This is what we think they are. This is our estimate. You'll see that the timing for this presenter link, this host link, has been grayed out. Well, that's because it's an automatic time. If I just open up that item, 
you can see that we've got some text here for the host. And so what Tinkerlist has done is using three words a second, it's estimated that time for me. And that's really useful when you've got lots of different people writing bits of the script and putting in and the scripts building up um, in your preparation time in the office in pre-production. And you can just see how your timings are developing as you start to build up the script. Uh, and it means that you can see instant changes. But of course, I might need to override that. I might decide, well, there's going to be a bit of reaction and applause. So I need to add some time. So I will manually make that 30 seconds and I can override that. Not 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds. So you can see that's affected my total here. It's obviously changed my the difference between my target and my estimated totals there. But we won't worry about that just now. So those are my estimated times. Let me take you through the other columns. Now I've got an empty column here, which is the actual. When I start timing these items as a part of my recording, then I will get an actual time in there for each item. I want to show you the other columns, and then I'll come back to the actuals. So in here, my columns menu, uh, this is where I can turn off the timings. If I'm a member of the team that doesn't need to see them, I can turn them off completely. And then I can select which options I need. I think you would always need the estimated duration for each item. I can't imagine a situation where you weren't, but you still have the option to turn it on and off. The actual will become very important when we start recording in a moment. So I'm just going to leave that selected. I'm just going to take you through as a little guided tour on what the others are. So the front time is the time from the beginning when each item should start. Now, the first item is going to start at zero seconds. So this is counting from the start of the show. And you can see that uh, this item will start at six seconds because it will start after the first item is finished and so on. So this is the start time for each item. And you can see that the last item is going to start 58 seconds into the show. It's 11 seconds. And that's where we get the total there of 109. So that's the front time. And that's how some people work. Some people like to know when each item should start. Um, and that's also historically how a lot of people worked out whether a show was underrunning or overrunning. So that's the front time. The back time, I'm going to come back to because I want to spend a little bit of time looking into that uh, in a bit more detail. The end time is very useful when you're pre-recording a show. This is the cumulative time, as it's called uh, uh, in, in, in some countries and some organizations. And so you'll see this is kind of effectively a running total. This is the time each item will end in the, in the, in the running order and actually effectively is a running subtotal of these times. So we can see after the second item, it's 36 seconds, that's going to end after 36 seconds, which is the duration of the first two items added together. And so after the last item, there's our total duration, 109. And so it's a running total. And here we call that end time. And for a pre-recorded show, it's, it's a similar to a cumulative time. Uh, then actual start time and actual end time, we're not going to look at just at the moment, but I will come back to that in a minute when I've run this show. So uh, I'm going to put on there my end time because I find that useful for a pre-recorded show. Now, this is the planning we've done in the, op in the office before we get to the show. We've obviously debated the times. We've worked on the content. Um, normally, you should go into a studio with a running order that matches your target because otherwise you've probably got some more decisions to make. So what I'm going to say now is, well, I'm just going to make the target. We're happy with that target. So I'm going to make that target 109. And so you can see what's happened now is that this has gone green. And that tells me that there's agreement between my target and what the running order is. And of course, if I was to change one of these, if I change that end link to 20 seconds, you'll see that it's gone red to show that there's a discrepancy. The running order is over. And if it's under, so my duration here isn't enough to meet my target, the show is under, it shows me in yellow. And I've got an, what we call an underage of five seconds. So just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to put that back to that. So we've got agreement between our target and what the running order is showing here. So the first thing we're going to do when we get to a studio is run a rehearsal. What I always like to do is to make sure that my VT times are correct. Now, you can see the different colors here in the running order, the VTs. Um, in this particular sequence are in purple, 
And the two green items are our host links. So that's very useful to see the different colors. What is also useful is that I've got a filter here. Um, so I can actually filter out a particular type. So I could say, just show me the VT sequences. And this could be useful for your VT operator, your EVS operator, so that when they first come in, they want to check all the timings. They can collapse the running order down to just their sequences uh, and go through and check them. And the, v the EVS operator might go through um, at the beginning of the day and actually check these timings because when they've come out the edit, they might be different to what you were thinking. So uh, they might go through and just make some changes. Okay, so I'll just take the filter off there. Now, the first thing we probably uh, want to do in rehearsals is check our host links, uh, make sure that their script durations, what we think it's going to last, is actually um, how long it's going to last. So that will, we'll, we'll rehearse uh, the host to do that. And what I like doing when I rehearse a host is I do all their links together. And then that gives us an update on all the timings. We get early information about any script changes. So what I tend to do is get a host in, rehearse all their links in one go, because then we can deal with any changes from there. So um, what I can do in rehearsals is I can run that timer using the play button there. And this then acts as a timer, so I don't really need a separate stopwatch. I'm just timing this sequence as the presenter is rehearsing it. And when they finish, then I can press it again, and it gives me an actual time. So in rehearsals, I can go through and I can rehearse each item with the host. I can compare it to what my estimate was before the rehearsal. And then, so we'll just let this one run a little bit longer. OK, and perfect. He's got that one to time. Now you'll see that there's a colored dot that's appeared next to the actual timing. And that shows me that the actual time is under the estimated time. So it's a useful note there. And green, green for good, the actual time meets the estimated time, so that's fine. Now what I would always do, or my script supervisor would do, is once we know what the rehearsed time is here, we know this was 17, I will then update the estimate manually from the rehearsed time. Depending on the judgment, you know, you might decide, well, I know it was 17 now, but when we have an audience clapping, it's going to be 25 and, and so on. So you make a judgment call on that. But you can update your estimates constantly through rehearsals because the whole point is your estimate column needs to be your most recent estimates based on your growing knowledge, rehearsing the show, updating the script and so on. So once we've got that up to date, we've updated now these rehearsed actuals into the estimate columns. We now don't need these actuals because we've updated the estimate, so we can just clear all those in one go, and that clears our actual column. And that frees it up then, ready for our recording. So what we're gonna do now is record the show, and uh, we've rehearsed it, we've checked the VT times. Um, so standby in studio, standby for re re recording, coming to the VT first, standby in five seconds, four, three, two, one, run VT. So we're now running the VT and we're gonna time this as it happens and cue Fred, Fred's our host. And I just simply click on play on the next item. It will start timing the next one. I can also, and this is brilliant, use the space bar. So that's what I'll do for the next one. And he's still talking. He's, oh, he's making a joke. Okay, now he's moved on. And we're on the VT, and now we're on the outro. And he's gonna finish the outro early. And coming out of this in two, one, and zero. So you can see that Obviously, the timings when you really record a show might be slightly different. The VTs probably won't. You've got the colors to help you. And then here, you can see constantly while you're recording the show how your target compares to the actual here. And this is giving you a constant update. This is going to be really useful when we do a live show. But again, you've got the same color scheme. So yellow shows you there's an underrun. 
green is on time and red is over. Now it's showing me minus 12 and that's because there's a 12 second difference between my actual total here and my target that I went into. So that's how you run a recorded show. You can, of course, um, uh, you could re-record uh, extra sections. There's one more thing I just want to show you with this. And I just want to show you uh, the actual start time by switching that column on there, which I did mention earlier. And now what you'll see we've got is the actual time of day time that each of these items started. And that's really useful if you're then taking your pre-recorded show into the edit and your editor has a list of time codes there to work from. So, uh, Eric. Are you with us, Eric, or shall I move on? Sorry, my camera didn't want to start. So, so uh, thanks, Tony. That was very interesting. Um, I, I see the screen sharing sometimes appear, appears a bit blurry, but uh, after presentation, you will uh, get an automatic email with the recording which should have a crystal clear image. Um, I, I remember doing a lot of these uh, shows, uh, Tony, as a, as a director, and I remember the PA holding two stopwatches, the PA, the director's, assist, the director's assistant for people who don't know what a PA is. Um, so holding two stopwatches, one of, uh, one of them to time the whole show and one uh, of them to time uh, one part of the show. And I also remember a lot of shouting between showrunners and PAs uh, to know how much time there still is and uh, these things, so I hope this feature can take away a lot of uh, stress uh, in, in the gallery. Um, and when I run the live show in a, in a minute or two, we'll really see how useful this functionality is to give us a constant update of whether the show is on time, under, or over. Yeah. I, I also did a lot of live shows, but I'm saying in Belgium, we uh, we tend to not to be, take, we, we didn't take timing so strict because I, I mostly I worked for the public broadcaster and I made the late night shows and um, it was only the guys from the news that sent some angry emails the day after because of uh, that we took uh, some more time. Yeah. Um, but of course, in a, a commercial environment, this is way more important because you have to make sure that uh, you respect the maximal, dura maximal duration for uh, commercial blocks within an hour. Uh, and um, and if you go over that, you will get a fine. So here it becomes way more important. Um, so I'm very curious about uh, your explanation about uh, back times. Tony. Yeah, and back times is something. I mean, I, I mentioned radio earlier, and you know, in radio, having to get to the news on the hour it doesn't matter what's going on. You have to be on time, and and so on. And you know, I've worked. Uh, on a lot of live shows in different countries. I've done a lot of stuff for the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 in the UK. And generally there, the timings are quite strict to protect news junctions and, and as you say, commercials and so on. Um, I mean, I've worked, you know, all over the world. The, the attitude to timings changes in different countries and from channel to channel for all the reasons that you've mentioned. You know, I mean, I've done live shows in some countries where we've overrun by 20 minutes and the next show got cancelled and, you know, and that's fine too. Um, and uh, but I do think it's a good discipline. The other thing is it helps you make better decisions by being really on top of the time. Because if you know early in the, in, in the live show that you have a problem with time, you can start dealing with it earlier. And then that avoids you being in a situation where you've got to the last 10 minutes, you've possibly got the most important part of the show, which could be you know the award moment or, or, or something. And then all your pressure is on cutting down that important moment to finish on time. So the sooner you know you have a problem, the sooner you can make decisions and you can protect the key content, which normally we put towards the end of the show, don't we? So um, being on top of timings is, is so, so useful. And I, I mean, it's quite a dry subject. I appreciate that. And look, we're both directors and we, we love being creative as, as well. But actually, timings is a vital tool to protect the sort of creative integrity and the content integrity of the show you're making. So, um, you know, I did a lot of training and coaching, um, and, and so I never underestimate the importance of an amazing script supervisor and the right tools to help you, help you tell the time. Uh, and and Tinklist is such an advance forward now um, on that. But in order to, the next case study I just want to take you through is the live show. I'm going to run a five minute live show in a minute and I'm already feeling, you know, the usual adrenaline about a live show. Um, before I do that, 
Um, I'm going to use back timings for that. And for those of you that aren't familiar with back timing, what I want to do is just talk you through so that we're all on the same page with what back timing is and how it works. So I've put together um, a few slides here just to explain how it works. So I should just explain what we've got going on here. So look, this is a timeline. This is our show here in the middle that we're going to make. This is our live show. Before us is a documentary, a commercial break. We must start at this time. Then our show must finish at this time because there's a commercial break and the news must start at 7.30. So that's our imaginary show just for the purposes of this explanation of back timing. Uh, that gives us a duration of the show of 23.40. I'm just going to move that up there to create a little bit of space. And uh, we now need to consider the content of our show and how this works. So you can see in the yellow and blue there that I've um, just put together a, a very basic show, obviously just for the purposes of explaining this, a host introduction, a link in the middle, and a good night link at the end. Guest one, guest two chat there. Uh, we'll put some timings on that. So we'll say 40, 20, 40 for the links. Um, and we'll make guest one 10 minutes. And then obviously the big Hollywood star, a bit longer for 12 minutes there. So that's our imaginary show just to talk you through this. Now, the way um, I've always worked on shows for a very long time uh, with some very, very talented and skilled script supervisors and PAs is by back timing. So what that means is, we are working out backwards, hence the name back timing, from the end of the show, what time something must start so that it finishes when we want it to finish. So let's take the example of our end link here. The show must finish at 19.27.20. The end link is 40 seconds. So it must start at 19.26 and 40. We therefore call this the back time the back time start time for this item. That's our target. We have to start this at that time to get here. Now, of course, it's the host speaking. The host could speak for longer or shorter, that's fine. But of course, the last item in your show could be a VT and it's fixed. And if it's fixed, you have to really, really get to it on time. So, We'll work, so you can see, um, we can work backwards through the show. We can add all the back times there. It's just a process of logic and a bit of hard work and a good brain uh, to work that out. But Tinklist now does all this for us, uh, and this is a complete joy. And the reason the back times are so useful is because they become our early warning system. So, for example, if after we've done the first sequence here, our target for it was 190420, but if we get to this item and this item starts at 1904.38, we immediately know we have a problem. We've come to it late, late by 18 seconds. And just to see the difference there, we can immediately say that we are overrunning by 18 seconds. And the earlier you get that information, and the more accurate it is, obviously, the more uh, you can start making plans. What are we going to change? Are we going to change this or this or this? so that we still finish on time. Getting this information immediately and accurately is really, really important. So those are the back times. We'll just clear that off there just for a second. Now we're imagining that we're live with this imaginary show. And we've done the host link. We planned it to be 40. It's come out at 58. We've gone into the interview. We planned it at 10 and it's come out at 10.46. So we've got, a, we've got a growing problem with this show. And if we don't do anything about it, we're gonna end up with a show that is gonna finish, well, at the moment, 104 late, but that all depends what happens here. Now, of course, we still have to hit this finish time, this off air time, so we are going to have to change something here in order to get rid of that overrun. So what we do is, we make our decision based on the knowledge. Remember, we learned very early on, we were running 18 seconds over. So we now have to make some decisions. And this is where the producer, the director, and, and whoever's uh, running the content of the show in the control room will say, well, look, we're running 104 over. I'm going to take it off this interview. So make this interview now 10.56. So we now have to change this back time. 
because the duration has changed. And that gives us a new target to start this item. This target in this particular example has remained the same because we haven't changed this. So the off air time, the back time for this item remains the same. So we use the back times as these constantly adjusted targets by which we have to start something so that it finishes on time. So that's really the theory of back timing. Oh yeah, there's that one highlighted for you. And so what this example tells us is that the most important thing here is going to be this countdown here, because we've decided to not change that time. We've changed this one. And during this item, we have to count very strictly to this target here in order to get off air. So that's the principle of back timing. And it was important to take you through that um, because I'm gonna now run a live show using Tinkerlist and the principle of back timing is absolutely critical for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my share window. I need a vision mixing desk for this, it would be far more efficient. Right. <clears throat> So hopefully now you can see my Tinkerlist window and there is my live running. So I'll just turn my camera off and then hopefully you can see a little bit more of the screen. So I'll just take you through what we've got here because this is a bit more complicated than the running order we just looked at. As before, my purple items are the VTs. We'll assume that we've rehearsed this and um, all our estimated timings are correct. Now, I'm just going to turn that column off because that was there from our last run through. So I'll turn those off and then I'll switch on different columns in a minute. I'll come to that in a sec. These are our estimated times. The green ones as before are host items. So we've got an intro link, a debate, uh, an interview there, a Skype interview, that's in blue. Uh, another Skype interview and the goodbye link. Now, I've also got an ad break on this one. So um, it's obviously a short ad break. Again, all these timings are fictitious. They're small, short, just so we get through this demo nice and efficiently. Uh, and I've put a VT sting either side of the break, as you would have. Now, you'll see here that there's two VTs, one of which is in a different color. That's because we have floated this item. And that means effectively we've taken it out of the running order but we can still see it there in case we need it. Now this gives us options. What I've done in this running order is I've got two versions of this VT. The one that's active is the one minute version. That's the one I want to use. But the one that's been suspended, if you like, or floated as we call it, that's a very common term or furloughed, you could even say, um, is the short version at 19 seconds. And I can change that so I can swap them over so I can unfloat that one. And then I can float the long one, just like this. And now you'll see, if you were looking at what my total time was there, it's actually reduced the total time because I've suspended or floated the long one and made the short one active. Now, I'm just gonna put that back how it was, which is always a good thing to do. And then I'll just unfloat that one, make the long one active. So there's my running order. What I'm gonna need for this in terms of columns is I'm going to need the estimated, I'm gonna need the actual, because that's critically important so that we know whether our show is on time or not. And the other thing I'm gonna put in is the back time. Now this is our target time, remember, for the time each item should start in order that we finish on time. Now, where do these come from? Well, they come back up here from our targets. And you remember that previously, when we were looking at a recorded show, we only had the target duration, and then we had the difference there between that and our actual running order. But when I select live, it now gives me an on-air time and an off-air time. So, Obviously, the difference between the two is the duration of the show. I can change any two of these, and it will work out the third one for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this show at 11.36. That's going to be our start time. And then I'm just going to put that duration in to match my estimated one that's here. So 
There we go. I mean, it's never a good idea to go into a live show with a, a running order that doesn't fit the slot. So we've worked on that. We know it's going to fit the slot. So uh, I've got 25 seconds to on air now, and I'm going to run this show in real time, and I'm going to show you a few facilities as we do it. So 15 seconds to on air. Stand by, everyone. Counting to the opening titles. Stand by opening titles then in five, four, three, two, one. Run VT. So now our titles are running. You can see the actual is counting up. Stand by for the link. Stand by, Fred. I won't bother calling the cameras just now. And Q. So Fred's doing his opening link. You can see that the actual time and the estimated time for my opening titles agree. It's gone green. Uh, I've got a slight over underrun here. That's probably because I went on air slightly early. So it could be half a second difference there. So I probably anticipated the clock there. Um, now, this is Fred's opening link. He's actually overrunning. And you can now see this has gone red because it's exceeding the estimate. I've got my current over time here. This is the show run times. And this is how much my show is over. And every second this item overruns makes the show more and more over. OK, so he's finished telling his joke. We're going to the VT now. And as we go into the VT, we are 21 seconds over, which I'm going to have to lose somewhere during this show. Coming out of VT, stand by Fred, Q. So we're out of VT now. On to Fred. This is the debate about the state of television. This could be a long debate. And still noticing that we're 21 seconds over. I'm a bit worried about that. I'm going to have to deal with it in a moment. And the debate's going very well. Oh, that's a great question. We've got to hear the answer to this. So the producer's decided that this item needs to overrun a little bit. Stand by, break after this, everyone. Stand by with a sting to the break. OK, we've got the answer. Fred's linking to the break and run VT. So we're now on the sting to the break. And that's finished. And we're now on the break, 30 seconds on the break. You can see that the colors here are showing me what was over and what was under. And that could be useful for a bit of post-show analysis or if your producer wants to look back and see, see what has happened. Now, I'm going to make an instant decision that I'm going to make this link at the end a little bit shorter. And that's just going to help with my timing. So my overage has now gone down a bit to 19 seconds. So that's good. Stand by, coming out the break. Stand by with the VT and run VT. So we're now on the start part sting. Stand by, Fred, for the interview and Q Fred. So we're now on the tech interview. This is uh, very interesting with the, uh, the scientist and inventor. Oh, and he's asked him the question about breaking the lockdown. Twitter's going to go crazy. This is going to overrun. I can sense this. The producer's really, really keen on getting the answer about breaking the lockdown. So this item, I'm afraid, is going on and on. There's no end in sight to this answer. And it's going on and on. Sounds like he's just making this up to fit the story. Uh, that's very interesting. OK, here we go. Come to the VT report then and run VT. So as I go into the VT, I'm now 35 over. Coming now for the Fred Jones interview. Stand by Fred, interviewing Fred and Q. Now, whilst we're on this, I need to deal with this. So I'm going to unfloat my short VT. Keep your eye on the total timings. I'm going to float my long VT. And now you can see, well, actually, I've got the opposite problem. I've now got an underrun of six seconds. Uh, well, that's OK. I can just add it to that, can't I? And then that will bring me back to time. So coming out of this then to the short VT on the statistics. So stand by. It's only a short VT, everyone. Counting to VT in, ten, in five seconds and run VT. And of course, I can still use the space bar to go between each item, which is very, very useful. And coming out the VT in 10 seconds, coming to the Skype interview next. And coming out the VT now in two, one, and Q. And we're on the Skype interview. Ah, oh, where, where, where's, where's the guest? We can't hear the guest. Okay, this could be a problem. Just ask again if he can hear you. No, okay, he's not there. 
Right, we're going to have to go into the goodbyes. You're going to have to fill, Fred. Uh, go into the goodbyes, trail ahead next week, and you're going to have to fill. So we move on to the next item. We're now under by 15. There's no point me counting down this 15 because this is my real target here to get off air, and I've got to fill. So I have a great facility. Rather than count down this item, I can click on that button, and it will count me to my target of the next item. So to get this show out on time, Fred, you need to finish speaking in five, four, three, two, one, and run the credits. And we're on the credits now for five seconds. And the credits are finished there. Okay, well, I stopped here a fraction of a second too early, but you can see we've brought the show out uh, just about a second over there, but we had the usual journey um, of a live show. Something's going under, you change it, that creates the opposite problem, uh, or going over and then you, you change the VT and it goes under, your Skype interview not being there. And we've managed to bring out the show pretty much to time, shows me I'm a second over, possibly because uh, I, I ran the VT slightly late. But um, I hope you can see how useful uh, those facilities are. The back time column is the secret to all of it because that gives you your target. Um, and this really means that we can now be much, much more um, ambitious with um, our shows because some of the uh, There is something else I want to show you, of course, because we've effectively been running a live show here. And of course, we have our own running order with who's over, who's under, and how we're going. I can see I've been over on all my sections. So I better hand back to you, Eric. Thank you, Tony, for uh, the very clear presentation uh, about uh, the, the theory of back times, very enlightening, and uh, also for the thorough uh, demonstration. I think it's uh, an eye-opener for a lot of people working in uh, live entertainment. Um, so anyway, we are open now for some questions. Uh, you can ask them via the chat. Um, we are here to, um, to, uh, to answer them. Um, you can ask a ton uh, the question to Tony or to me, no problem. Charlotte, is there already something coming in? Nina, um, she asked us if the actual timing can or uh, actually can count back as well. Um, I'm quickly translating this because it was asked in Dutch. So the actual time of a card is counting down on the right top in the card queuing box. That's right. Yeah, so you do have that facility, um, and it's just once you use it two or three times, your eye becomes familiar with um, where to look on the screen. But the when you're running a show, let me just run an item to bring it up. When you – can you see that? Do I need to share that? Can you see that, Eric? Um, you can actually see the item counting down here. Your, count, your up time and your down time for the item – are shown at the top when it's running. So. All right, thank you, Tony. Um, another question got in from Chris. Um, Chris asks us, uh, yeah, in our show, we have really strict segment durations and weird rules, like no more than two ad breaks per 30 minutes. I would love to see if there's any ways that Tinkerist helps highlight if we are running into a problem and have to force an ad break or if the plan breaks are code compliant, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, it's a really good question, isn't it? And there's all sorts of um, rules for different channels in different countries and, and so on about um, uh, deadlines for when a break must start or must finish by, and you can only have so many minutes of a program without the next ad break and, and, and all of these things. I mean, what Tinklist helps you do is just be completely on top of the timings um, of your show. And because you have all the target information at the top, um, that gives you an overview. The other thing that we haven't shown you here, because it would make the webinar too long, is you can break your show into sections. So we were just doing it all as one section there, but you can have two sections, three sections, um, and each section will have its own timings at the top. And that really helps you compare your deadlines uh, and so on. Um, 
I mean, it's a bit hard to be more specific about that without dealing with a specific set of rules, but absolutely Tinkerlist helps you do that because you are much more on top of all of the timings of your show. And especially if you break it into sections, you can see when you're getting to a danger point. Briefly, uh, I briefly shared my screen and uh, this is a show how, yeah, it's a very minimal, minimalistic show also where it's built up out of three uh, main parts uh, split by a break. So um, we have a special break card um, that you can put in the platform. And then on top, you can see um, how, how long your breaks take for the whole show or how long and how long the program uh, takes in comparison to that. Um, so there, and I, I think also uh, when you take the back times in count, there must be a way to uh, achieve this, but I, uh, I will be happy to, um, to talk directly to you, um, uh, Chris, um, and, uh, and try to think out how we can achieve, uh, we, how, how we can solve this problem. Any, any more questions, Charlie? I see a lot there's, of There's a really about. interesting question that's literally just come in a few seconds ago from Randall about um, when live, who runs Tinklist? The director is a little busy, as I know too well. I completely agree with you. Um, and I have tried to use Tinklist on a show where, for, in fact, for reasons of not having enough space, we were doing a show for Red Bull in France, I think it was, we, we didn't have enough room on this production for a PA. We're, and so I had to run um, timing software and direct and, and do everything else and, and make notes as well. So I totally understand that problem. What's brilliant about this new update in Tinklist is you can just hit the space bar. So once the first item is running, it's just a space bar to move it on uh, to timing the next item. I mean, there are lots of other facilities here, which probably would be for another webinar, but the item that you saw that was highlighted with the red, you can move that forward. It adjusts the timings for, for that item and the previous as you do that. But other people can follow that so that other people can look at the running order and they can see which sequence we're on. Um, so the space bar helps if it has to be the director, but of course it could be someone else on the team who is perhaps less busy during the show because they were it's a coordinator who's been doing a lot of work getting taxis and whatever before the show something like that their role during the show could be the space bar so uh, it, it, the space bar makes it easier i think eric i don't know what what thoughts you've got on that it depends uh, there's a lot of differences, differences between uh, countries so i see in uk it's often the the pa or the script supervisor that uh, does this I see in Holland the same thing. In Belgium, it's often the showrunner. Also in LA, it's a showrunner. It's uh, uh, somebody who's more responsible for the content and is also thinking about timing. So it depends uh, on the on the region or on the, the type of show. So, um, but the nice thing is any anybody anybody can do it, and other people can follow it. So because it's real time linked to each other. Uh, there's another question for Chris. From Chris, could you have multiple parallel back times, back times items like the speedboats need to start one minute before we throw to the hard bar site, but not until the water taxi arrives, with, which takes six amounts of That is just a brilliant time. question. And, and my answer to that is yes, please. And I've already asked Eric about this some months ago, and I think, I think it's probably in development, isn't it, at some point for a later release. Because my question, Chris, on this, I and mean, it's a completely brilliant example, but my question was really quite simple. At the end of a chat show or a news show, you might want to back time the music to finish at a different point to the end of the show. So having some items where you can define an independent point to back time to uh, or other, some other event, like you mentioned, is uh, I, be brilliantly useful, would help us make better shows. And, and Eric and I have already talked about that, so I'm, I'm sure that the coders are working away in a back room on that. In a live show, can you take the actual timing to the editing room and adjust the timings while you are editing? So um, at the moment, so Tony showed it briefly. So when you're doing a pre-recorded show, uh, every time you go to the next item, we we uh, take a timestamp of when the item started and when the item ended. Um, you can even pause um, an item. So imagine there's a technical problem. You can pause and it will um, it will take that in counts. 
Um, you cannot edit these uh, values because they are automatically generated. But um, what's possible, um, you can also add an extra column next to the to the to the rundown. Uh, so you can add, and uh, anyone can add extra columns um, depending on its role. You can see or uh, or open different uh, columns, uh, and you could make notes there uh, if you want to write down um, at. Uh, uh, 2020. 20, uh, there is uh, laptops from the from the host. You can write these things down in separate columns if you want. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Jan. So, um, if there's no more questions, I um, I think I would. Uh, like to thank Tony very uh, a lot because um, all the work you did. It was a pleasure. Yeah, um, and uh, it was. I think it's very useful. It was very interesting. Um, so, um, if uh, anyone has any questions, um, you can always send us an email. I think there will be a link displayed. Yes, uh, at the bottom. Um, if you uh, if you want to get in touch, talk about this or um, give some critics about what you just saw, um, please let us know. And um, and and more information about the platform and everything it does, you can find on our website. And there will also be a link at the bottom of the screen uh, where you can go to our website. So, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, take care. Bye. Bye.